My name is Fred Dobbs and I am sitting here today in Sydney on Vancouver Island just off the west coast of Canada and beside me is my latest sculpture titled Pearl. Pearl was a sculpture that was conceived after finding a, an abalone shell on a beach in Taiwan and once I had the shell and I was looking at it I envisioned and then later placed a piece of clay into the abalone shell and started to draft the idea of a mermaid asleep inside this shell. The, the storyline behind it was the aspect or the idea of where do mermaids come from in, in so much that an abalone shell does create a pearl and so this could be her home and this is how she got her name. Uh, so going to the uh, production of Pearl, Pearl as a bronze sculpture was created initially as a clay sculpture. From the clay I made a mold of it, a separate mold just for the mermaid Pearl and I had another mold for the, the shell that you see here. There's a third mold because behind this shell is another shell which holds and supports it from falling backwards. The molds are made of fiberglass shell and then a rubber interior. The rubber catches all the detail. The fiberglass acts as a jacket. Once the mold is created for each of the three pieces, um, I then uh, get wax and I put a wax coating into the mold and build up the wax until I have a 3 sixteenths of an inch thick wax impression of each of this piece. So it goes from the clay sculpture to a wax. The waxes then come out of the molds and are cut up into sections so that we can go to the next step, which is to make another mold, which is a ceramic mold. The first one I described, the uh, fiberglass and rubber one, couldn't tolerate the pouring temperature of a bronze, which is around 2,000 degrees. So the second mold that we make, and this is the reason why we have the wax impressions, is a ceramic mold. So once the, the wax is created, the wax impressions, we then cut up the pieces, like I said, and um, do what's called sprueing and gating. We add wax channels and cups to it so that we're building a structure that will allow us to pour a bronze. Once the uh, sprues and vents and cups have all been added, we then dip the wax into ceramic. And we do this over and over again, dusting each layer in between with fine grains of sand. So we start off with super fine, two coats, then we go to another two coats of um, the mid-range uh, sand, and then finally a coarse, which we back up to get sometimes as many as 12 layers, and sometimes as thick as, say, three quarters of an inch of ceramic around everything. Then the uh, wax is burnt out of the ceramic shell, and what we're left with is a ceramic vessel, a hollow ceramic vessel that we can then pour the bronze into. In preparation for the pour, the molds are heated up again so that there's not going to be a drastic heat exchange when we have the 2,000 degree bronze being poured into it. So we get set up where we set the ceramic molds into sand, stabilize them, and then we heat up our bronze. We're all wearing special spacesuits so that we're not getting burnt. The bronze is melted and heated, like I said, to 2,000 degrees, and then we pour it into the ceramic vessels, filling it right up and uh, within probably 40 minutes, the bronze starts to cool. When it cools, we're able to smash off this ceramic mold. Once the ceramic has cooled and we've smashed off all our ceramic, what, what's revealed is the bronze. It's now substituted where the wax was, and we're able to cut off all our sprues and channels. And with the individual pieces, we uh, put them into a sandblast machine and clean off all the ceramic bits, parts, and pieces, and any residue. And now we're left with a bunch of pieces that all have to be put back together again. This was eight pieces in total, um, and that all had to be welded back together again. When you weld, of course, there's a seam that's created, a seam of weld. So I try to find areas where I can get into and repair without anybody noticing. So if you come up to this piece, you should not be able to see where I did any of the welds. And the weld is done with bronze. so. The seam is perfect. In other words, you'll never see where the line was. Once the bronze is all put back together and all the finishing and detailing is done, the final thing is the color application. There's three different kind of colors. The one that exists on her tail section with this green patina, and then subtly her skin will be slightly different colored than the shell itself. It's got what's referred to as a ferric color that's on there, the patina. 